Hey guys, this is Jake from State Fun. Today, we're gonna be working on the cooling of this, ow, hot, of this here Cummins motor. All right, so talking about cooling plans here, obviously I can't put a radiator up here, but I think the air condenser unit that I will get, it's gonna fit in this area. It's supposed to be on the other side of this little bracket. So I think I'll still have room to put that and I'll take this X brace out at that point and put a pusher fan on it to flow circulate air around or circulate air through the condenser so that the AC works. As far as cooling for the engine goes, I don't have any room for a radiator there. And my plan is I'm gonna take some ENT conduit and run it alongside the frame rail all the way back to the back and have the radiator hanging in between the frame rails and the rear. So this is a inch and a quarter inside diameter. So I'm using inch and a half uh, ENT conduit. That's the metal conduit. That should have no problem holding up to the heat requirements of an engine. The inlet down here, that's uh, slightly less than the two inch inside diameter. And I am using two inch ENT conduit, or maybe EMT conduit, metal conduit. <laughs> So the first step is planning. And I'm a very visual planner. First thing I wanna know though is how far of a straight shot can I make with this conduit? Cause I don't wanna make that many bends. And when I'm looking right down this frame rail in here, it looks like I've got a fairly straight shot straight up uh, towards the engine bay. So I'm hoping that I can shove my 10 foot conduit up through there and then I'll have a, a joint on it to another piece that comes closer to the back and has bends to go towards the inlet and the outlet. But uh, since I am a visual person, I'm gonna put the conduit up through there and see what it does. So I think I can go right up through that hole that y'all can't see because there's so much pipe in the way. That bright hole right there, I think I can go right up through there and I'll put a bend down here to straighten it out to go flat with the frame rail probably somewhat inset some so it's out of the way because i'm also going to have to put a two inch pipe along through here somewhere let's see where's that pipe there's that pipe down there so i think with that i can take it kind of up and around to here ish i'll have to go around the intake piping on the turbo but from there i can go to a water neck where i have a radiator cap be able to fill it and then uh, to the outlet of the engine. I may try and come around, bend it to where it's on top of this frame rail and comes up through here. I'm gonna measure some stuff and then probably just put some bends on it and see what happens. So here's the radiator. I don't plan on it being flat like this. I plan on it actually being about like that angle maybe, instead of having it like completely flat. And then I'm hoping that I can use like an L bracket to mount to the ear that's here on the radiator and then mount to the frame. So I got a few here that I meant to get bolts for and completely forgot. Let's see, would that possibly work? The other thing is there's supposed to be a uh, hitch up under here. Maybe I ought to get the hitch in place and figure out where it goes first. Well, that's not fun. That really throws a hitch into things. Ha ha ha. Let's drill a little pilot hole first. The hitch might help out actually. And they give me something else to mount to on the lower portion of the radiator. Alrighty, 
Hitch receiver is attached. Now let's mess with the uh, radiator again. Maybe I'll be able to attach the lower portion of the radiator to this uh, receiver. I think that would work pretty good right there. And then the other side we'll have to figure out. I gotta go find my nuts and bolts and washers and lock washers. Don't worry guys, I found my nuts and bolts and washers and lock washers. I drill a hole through there. Try a black sharp, it'll show up great on that black paint. I'll go drill it out real quick. About where it'll be, so let's uh, let's take a quick look at it. Looking at it from the back, the rear differential is still lower than the radiator, so that's not a problem. Shouldn't be any any issue dragging the radiator on the ground or anything. Uh, the hitch is not quite as low as the radiator, but that's okay. I think the angle between the hitch and the, and the rear end means that even if I was to start going up a hill where where the back end is gonna be lower than the uh, than the differential, the hitch is gonna end up hitting before the radiator does. So what I'm doing to kind of eyeball whether or not it's going to drag the bumper first or the radiator first, or the, sorry, the hitch first or the radiator first is when you look along the hitch, when you line that up with the differential there, you see a lot of differential as you come down before you see the radiator. So the straight line between the differential and the hitch, if I got at an angle high enough to where I was gonna hit like that, it would still hit the hitch first because the radiator is not sitting within the plane of that angle. I think that'll be okay, and it should get a good bit of airflow. I don't think the tires are gonna kick up too much stuff there. Uh, I don't think it's tires are really going to kick anything up that direction. Most of it's going to go mostly straight back. Uh, I'd be hard pressed to kick it out sideways like that. So we'll try and get the other ones mounted up and uh, see how we like it then. Alrighty, let's see. So this little bracket here, I'm going to have to actually shorten this top section. Let's see how much I might have to shorten it there. Looks like I probably won't have to shorten it too much. I'm just barely starting to hit this top section of the rail. so. I'm probably gonna go ahead and come down here, just take the top bolt off on each of them. And then that'll leave me two options for bolting it up on the frame rail side. And I'll have to drill a hole for it to meet up with the uh, radiator support side. I'll end up doing that on both sides, I believe. So looking at this side over here, it looks like this will actually line up nicely to where I can use pre-drill hole on the bracket here. I'll just have to drill a hole. Drill a hole right there on the frame rail, or on the hitch receiver there. Stick a bolt in it, and that'll be the lower section ready to tighten down. Once we get those uh, tightened down, the upper ones put in, I think we'll be okay. Got my uh, bracket cut down to size. So we'll figure out where it's going to end up sitting. Yep, right along that line. Right, let's take a lap of that hole first. Got my hole drilled. Looks like it lines up quite nicely. Don't want this sitting on the frame rail. I don't think I want to pick it up a little bit. So I'm going to do right there. It didn't hurt me. It would be better if I could get a piece that kind of went in between those and stop this thing from being able to rock like this. But we'll see what happens when I lay it, when I tighten it down. Let's uh, let's get this other one marked and drilled out. All right, so if I put this guy up here, I'll mark a line in between these two now. I'm marking about the center of the two holes that are up here so that I know about where the center is. I'm gonna push this up against the frame rail and then I can just mark the center of this center where the hole's supposed to go onto there. So now I'll take my drill and I'll go somewhere along this line, drill a hole. 
I'll probably do it over here since this one's kind of offset that direction and it's kind of close to it. So that's how I'm doing that. And it seemed to work pretty good on the other side, so we're going to stick with that plan. Let's tighten these suckers down. Cap, that's a nice cap. Man, that looks okay. Oh, good gosh. It don't want to move none either. <sighs> Just very minimal. Yeah, I ain't out of work. Woo! All right, so now the question kind of is, how am I gonna run my uh, water tubes? I was actually kind of thinking, Maybe I'd run those uh, water lines along the outside of the frame rail there and then that would kind of give it a heat barrier away from the exhaust and uh, it would make mounting it a lot easier and I can definitely tell there's a straight shot all the way up there. It's just a matter of where I'm going to cross over the frame rail at to get into the engine compartment and to get over here oh, to the radiator. Um, uh, after looking at it right now, I think I might take this uh, upper radiator hose and just go straight across up uh, over the frame rail here. Y'all can't see that. Let me show you up in here. Uh, up over the frame rail here and then alongside it all the way to the front. This lower radiator hose here, I'll probably take it and basically do a 180 because it's pointing that way right now. Do a 180 come over and probably stay inside the frame rail until I get on the other side of the axle and then cross under right over there to the other side of the frame rail. I think I can run a line or uh, one of these metal conduits up here through that gap right there and then up to the uh, inlet of the engine. So that'll be my two inch conduit into the inlet of the engine and then I got to thinking I'm like why not run one on one side one on the other on the other side I went ahead and ran the uh, one and a half inch conduit along the side of the outside frame rail and I'm thinking I'll bring it through that gap right over there and along behind the engine between the engine and the firewall here up into this area over here and then maybe run some flexible pipe from there to wherever my uh, radiator cap piece is gonna sit, however that ends up, and then to the intake, or the outlet, I guess, of the engine. I think that would work pretty good. That's just gonna be a lot of uh, bends, but I think I'm gonna give it a shot. All right, Still got a little ways to go, so I could put a straight uh, connector on there, extend it just a little bit, and then do another 90. A little straight piece add on to that to this let's uh let's work on the front a little bit first so let's get a little bit of a bend on that front front piece of pipe see what it looks like after that i think i stick a 90 on there and do a straight pipe up to the up through the gap and behind the engine block and i think we'll be in business so i've got some galvanized hanger strap and a self-tapping screw so i'm just going to use that to hang it up here We'll see how long it holds. Go ahead and tell me down in the comments below how terrible of an idea that is. Uh, maybe I'll listen to you in the future. Yep, that'll be a problem. This is a Redneck Engineering channel, not do a completely perfectly channel. We'll attach it other places and see if we can get it to stop uh, rocking too much, rubbing against stuff. But until we get it where we need it, that'll do just fine. I end up having to put a slight bend in this one. We'll see how it goes. I think that right there will work. I can do this pipe up to here. Put my water fill there. And then a flex going down to there. Boop. Off of the water neck. Water neck set right there. Only in line with that, obviously. Just a little loop down 
Where would my overflow tank go? Probably up here on the front end somewhere. Just run that wire to a Pepsi bottle or something. But where it's at right now, that would probably be too close to the exhaust. Probably would prefer to have it up here somewhere, pointing upward and then having it come up across like that. I'll make that cord go over it. Need something to hold that up. I'll strap it up, it'll be okay. This I'll probably strap to the, up here I'll strap it to the heater core line. And then I'll use a flexible piece for the connection between the water neck and the uh, filler tube. That's pretty good. It's a lot more sturdy now. I like that. That'll work. That'll work well. Yay. And then just whoop. Somehow, I don't know. It'll, it'll make a loop somehow and go in there. I guess let's go work on the back end. So there's where the pipe ends. I basically just need to get a section that'll go from there back here and then I'll have a flex pipe that goes through the uh, in between the bed and the frame rail and connects to the radiator measure that out real quick and uh, we'll go ahead and cut a small section all right I can take a piece and clamp it on there nicely and that'll run to the uh, radiator There we go, that's good. Well, let's get the uh, other side mocked in about the same as this one. Oh, and then we'll go to a uh, parts store and see if we can get some connectors. All right, so we got the same thing going on. Got a pipe running all the way down through there. Oh, we're gonna try and uh, bend it and sneak it through up in there a little bit. Since I'm not doing any harsh bends, I may be able to actually use pipe almost all the way without having to do too many elbows. I guess we'll find out. I'll, uh, I'll probably pull this, uh, pull this pipe out and do some measurements and give it a whirl. Did a little bit of measuring and I think I might can do a straight uh, piece kind of angled. Oh, angled to where it goes straight across right over the axle up here and ends up kind of over there over top of where the radiator dump is and then I just have a flexible tube come down. So I measured that out. Should be able to use a four foot uh, stretch pipe to go straight across there. So that's what we're gonna try next. I decided to cut it five feet long and uh, put a little bit of an angle at the end of it. See if I can uh, match up nicely with the other pipe that's already there. We'll see how that looks. That's uh, about a 45 degree uh, coupler should work right there. So with that in position up front, back here, I think that uh, upper radiator pipe that I'm sticking in here, I think it's a little too long. So we're gonna cut uh, six inches, maybe a foot off. Doesn't necessarily matter if we go too far, if we cut too much off, because the flexible pipe will make up for it. Oh, that's definitely doable. Sweet. I was able to get some uh, flexible coolant hose. I got two that are one and three quarter inch that'll go for the uh, outlet of the engine to the inlet of the radiator and then I got one two and a quarter inch that goes from the inlet of the engine to the outlet of the radiator and I think this one right here I'm gonna use I'm gonna use it right there 
We'll stick it on the uh, the water neck and run it to the filler neck. A nice little loop. Uh, I may have to strap it down to that. Just keep it from putting too much stress on anything else. So let's go ahead and get that part done. And then we'll get to the back. Definitely gonna be cutting this uh, hose down if I can get the uh, parts to work the way I want them to. So I can cut this up here, and the pipe will come straight into it, and loop down into the radiator. That'll be perfect. Sweet. And I've got another piece over here I can cut for the 45 that will go on uh, on my joint over there. Well, let's go see if these things work. That's one coolant line hooked up. Let's see if we can get a 45 on there. Radiator hooked up. Time to get some fans on this sucker. So I've got two 14 inch fans. Probably fit on here side by side well enough. That looks pretty good. And then we'll wire these together and run a wire from, the, uh, from a relay up front to them. All right, so you put the feet on first. <laughs> and then this uh, this little tie essentially you want to try and shove it through one of the fins on the radiator without damaging it shoves all the dirt out with it man look at that put each of these in and then I'll go to the back side and show you what you do on the other side so with each of these tie downs the uh, instructions in my kit have these little foam these little foam pads here and it says sticky side toward the radiator stick that down and stick it onto the radiator I guess that keeps you from over tightening it maybe kit I got sent these tensioner springs they're not required but uh, I'm gonna use them for the heck of it keep the cap from uh, hitting the radiator and then you got these plastic caps they go over top of the tie and you only use these once so make sure you uh, got it right and you just click it down until the tensioner spring starts to compress or if you don't have a tensioner spring until the foam pad starts to uh, compress once you get all these on you clip the little excess tags off and uh, that's a mounted, uh, mounted fan I'll cut these off but man this stuff's coming together. Oh, it's getting so close to being able to drive it somewhere. Oh, excitement! Wires on this one. Blue's gonna go to ground, so I'm gonna go ahead and snip blue wire on each one. So I'm gonna strip the uh, wire back just a little bit. And then I'm gonna crimp this terminal on there. And that'll get screwed up right there, most likely. Put a screw into the uh, into the frame. That'll give us a ground. Uh, these black wires, I'm going to go ahead and uh, clip them off as well. We'll tie them together. And then we'll run a power wire back here and tie power to it. So to get power from the battery back here to the radiator, I need to run a wire alongside the truck. That'll work. 
No, no wine. No need to wine. No. There's a ground wire hooked up. Alright, let's see if the fans work. Hey Emily, can you turn the key on? Don't crank it up, just turn the key on. Alright, turn it off. You won't hear it over the engine. Moves some air pretty good too. There's definitely blowing air through the radiator. Cooled my legs off a little bit. Alrighty. Next step, get this thing filled with water and see if it leaks or if it overheats. Well, I got a little excited. Spoke too soon. I actually need to loop these uh, heater core lines so that we don't just start flowing water out of there. Uh, normally these will go to the heater core, but uh, I haven't got that installed yet. So we're just going to do a quick little bypass loop here. That'll keep it from leaking water out. I need a lot more water at first and I'm actually still feeding it water slowly. So I'm pretty sure that, uh, that that's helped out a lot. And I can feel the pipe down low. I can feel it getting cold, which means I'm getting water to it. So the way that these pipes run, there's a high on the frame rail, both inlet and outlet. And I trapped an air bubble on the inlet side in the peak of that. Um, so what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to leave this cap off and I'm going to fill the radiator through this heater hose, which goes down and feeds the lower outlet or the inlet of the engine. That way I fill up this pipe, push the air that's in the pipe up over the hump, down to the radiator, up through the radiator, out that pipe, and up through all the pipe here. Pushing air up against air a lot easier than pushing the air up against water. Filling it up now. Now that's cold. the uh, coolant reservoir from the Dodge down here and that's the uh, overflow from the filler neck so when uh, when we build up pressure we overflow into the coolant tank and then it cools off and the pressure is relieved it'll suck the water back in instead of just blowing it out and leaving it out well guys she ran without overheating for about 45 minutes we went ahead and let her cool down filled up the uh, radiator with cool water um, that's just from the pressure differences of hot water to cold water. 
And we got a uh, overflow reservoir installed that was on the Dodge originally. Thanks for watching. Go ahead and hit the like button down below and subscribe for the continuation of this project and all my other ones. Y'all have a good one.